As I begin this recording, a friendly reminder that if you do not wish to appear in the recording, please make sure that your audio and video are disabled at all times. Also, anything put into the chat box will not appear in the recording. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Maggie is welcome to take over. Brooke, thanks so much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, right off the bat, I want to begin with gratitude, <laughs> showing, uh, thanking you and Panaga and all the behind the scenes support uh, from the San Antonio Public Library and providing these types of uh, educational programs, not only for our local community, but for our family and friends around the world. It has been an amazing opportunity and benefit to connect with our friends and family in other countries over the past year, over more than a year. Can you believe it? This is our ninth, uh, I'm sorry, our 11th um, session this year, but we had many um, last year. So. As we look today, um, as we look at the end of the year, looking at November and our focus on gratitude and mindfulness, I really just wanted to spend a little bit more time right at the beginning um, connecting with that and sharing my gratitude for you guys and for what we are able to provide through this beautiful technology in sharing our thoughts and ideas so that each of us can consider ways to show up as our best self in body, in mind, and in spirit, right? So uh, my name is Maggie Gruskin. I'm here in San Antonio coming to you live. And I'm one of the initial co-founders of the International Day of Yoga, a local community group here. Um, we've been doing local yoga programs for maybe the past five or six years. So um, serving in that to just educate our community on ways that we can look at the philosophy from yoga to create wellness based and whole person oriented lifestyle programs so um, as we near our conclusion for this year uh, looking at discovering ayurveda through self-care uh, for today and for next month we'll be looking at overall lifestyle and how we can look deeper at our inner core and what skill sets we can um, develop so that we grow our capacity to improve our habits and our mindset and stay on that path exploring with joy and creativity and curiosity on ways to stay healthy be healthy and um, be a part of that rising tide of health so let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll begin today's presentation which is gratitude and mindfulness so this is our 11th session, and if you have missed any of the um, previous presentations, I invite you to check out the link. Um, just Google San Antonio Public Library in the YouTube, and um, we can also put that in the chat for those of you that are here today. So thank you everybody for joining us live. If you wanna put in the chat where you are joining us from, I'm always curious to see who our locals are and if anybody is visiting us from out of town or out of the country. So today the focus is gratitude and mindfulness. And I give gratitude that our program is also sponsored or recognized as an approved event by the Mayor's Fitness Council as a way to share and incentivize and inspire ourselves and our community for new ways to stay, to stay fit in both body and mind. So thanks so much. Yay, we have San Antonio in town, uh, friends from Allen, Texas and Birmingham. Hey, Kelly, thanks for joining us. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you for joining us all the way from Alabama. All right, my friends. So we have been looking now every month at a different different approach, different aspect, different facet of the gem of our health in all the different puzzle pieces in our holistic well-being. So this month in November, we're looking at gratitude and mindfulness. Okay, and uh, next month, join us for our, our last series in the Discover Ayurveda Through Self-Care, which will be focusing on the upward spiral living map. So if you wanna work with your compass and look at your meaning and purpose map as we look to next year, how to spiral upward in our health, join us in December for an interactive session. And that will be the second Wednesday at 12 noon central 
or uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. December 8th will be that Wednesday. So as we begin to look at Ayurveda, and we are looking at this idea of yoga, uniting our mind and body with our thoughts, our words, and our action in the way we create and cultivate a lifestyle, taking into account the modern ways in which we live. So incorporating all the different facets of lifestyle, including movement with body, stillness in mind, and nurturing our bodies and spirit with community as well. So Ayurveda, if you're brand new to Ayurveda, if you want to put in the chat, you're brand new or you're a practitioner or what you would love to learn, make sure that you put your questions in the chat so we can address them along the way or at the conclusion of my presentation. So to begin with, Ayurveda is comes from the language Sanskrit, which is known to be about, is probably the world's oldest language. And so from this Ayurvedic um, language, Ayurveda is now viewed as the sister science to yoga and it represents this knowledge or the science of life with an understanding of the entire lifespan so it's not just a habit for a season or for 10 years it's the whole lifespan and then diving into today the present moment awareness of how we're showing up in life wonderful so we've got some new people wonderful great so Ayurveda is IU means life and Veda means the science or knowledge. And it's about 5,000 years old and it's a consciousness based system of healing. So this is what we're going to dive in today as we focus on gratitude and mindfulness and why Ayurveda is such a relevant way to look at our own self care habits, even after 5,000 years of practice in this holistic um, practice known as Ayurveda. So the focus again is wholeness, the wholeness of who ourselves, how we're showing up in our body, in our mental well-being, how we orient to life, and then how we orient to our highest aspect, our self. What is our vision for our best health, our highest aspirations in other areas, including your family, your role in community, your job and career, or your legacy? So focusing on the whole lifespan and the whole aspect of ourselves, utilizing the mind as a tool of our consciousness is where Ayurveda comes in as the sister science to yoga. And it uses the five senses. So we have all the tools that we need to begin to work with Ayurveda from this householder perspective. So Ayurveda could also be a, a medical practice. You could become a medical doctor, an Ayurvedic physician and have prescriptions using herbs and different practices, breathing practices, all of that incorporated. And then we can also learn to use the basic approaches, the basic lifestyle from Ayurveda, customized to our unique nature as just regular people. And so that is the beauty of Ayurveda. It works with um, the everyday self-care practices, in a preventive curing kind of a way from our individual practices, lifestyle practices. And it is also a medical practice. So from our perspective, we're looking at Ayurveda as self-care, how we can install habits that honor our nature according to our doshas and that keep us on that pathway to whole person well-being. Wonderful. Yes. And someone's, yes, somebody has here, a, a, their dad was a Ayurvedic practitioner medical practitioner it's an amazing beautiful evolving practice and the beautiful thing is it starts with you so how we connect ayurveda and yoga is that they're sister sciences they're like tools that use each other to sharpen and refine our focus where we're at so yoga most people in america and around the world are now aware of yoga um, the American Yoga Journal did a study that estimated about 35 million Americans practice yoga regularly and about 80 million in any one year are trying it out. So approximately one third of people living in America um, have tried yoga or are aware or doing it regularly. And for the most part, yoga is about purifying and cleansing the body and having an, 
an ability to sustain a practice. And a practice is more than just doing a habit once in a while. It's an attitude of showing up with an intention of why we're here to do the work and our goal. What are we here to benefit from this work? So the union of the mind and the body is this practice. We can do yoga, we can do a yoga class, but a yoga practice is this intention. It's an attitude that involves self-awareness of how we're showing up every day, recognizing our intention of what we wanna do on the mat for that day, and then how intensely we're gonna work. Are we all in or are we gonna be distracted by something else? So, so many of the habits and life skills that we do on the mat with yoga are just as relevant off the mat. So if we can look at Ayurveda as sort of yoga off the mat, Ayurveda uses yoga as one of the many, many tools utilizing the five senses that instill this awareness, a balanced sense of self-awareness, knowing of self, and then it starts to say, who am I? Based on the five elements of Ayurveda, and we'll get into that um, in other sessions, or if you've missed the previous sessions, go back and you can see the five elements that are from Ayurveda that contribute to the three doshas. So the five elements are space, air, fire, water, and earth are sort of these master elements that Ayurveda uses to understand and answer that first primary question of the soul. Who am I? And if you can hear my kitty cat, he's hungry. He's like, I'm hungry. That's who I am. So Ayurveda seeks to answer, who am I? As the first step before we embark even on a journey of deciding what we want in life, our health, our practices, what we're here to do with our work or creativity or how we show up in life. So by understanding our doshas and the doshas are those mind body tendencies, they're not a label that we're going to put on ourselves. We're not a rigid part of this dosha. These doshas are just energetic vibrations that have corresponding characteristics. And we've talked about it in previous sessions that now in modern uh, positive psychology research, there is uh, much attention being given to the importance of living our values and living from our character strengths. So knowing our values or virtues is very um, respected right now in the field of positive psychology and in the ancient eyes through the lens of Ayurveda and yoga, our whole voyage of discovery of how we can embark on our journey of self care starts with knowing who we are understanding our nature or prakruti so at conception yoga philosophy says that we are given an imprint of a combination of those five elements and they form these three doshas the vata the pitta and the kapha now these are governed by gunas and gunas just means characteristics. So they are our attributes, who we are by nature. Now the gunas are key to understanding and balancing these doshas. So when we try to balance our current state of being, we go to those characteristics of the doshas. And that's not our focus here, but just to give you an idea of how we're using the ideas from yoga and Ayurveda as we move into our discussion with these new uh, virtues of gratitude and practices of mindfulness. And yoga is generally translated to be that union of the mind and body. And so, as we said, Ayurveda and yoga are used interchangeably as sister sciences. So if you don't know your dosha, if you're curious about it and would love to learn, um, Brooke has put in the chat a link. You can go to chopra.com forward slash dosha quiz or just search online. And there's many now, many free complimentary dosha quizzes online. So in the past 10 years, Ayurveda has just blossomed as people seek to understand this more comprehensive understanding of who we are and how we can look for natural ways towards healing our bodies and minds and live in a more integrated and authentic manner. So if this is of interest to you, I encourage you to um, 
take one of those dosha quizzes and just check out and be curious who am i as this energetic being okay so um with ayurveda all we need is the sense of curiosity about learning how to live our best lives through awareness of self and our outer environment by being able to respond to life's demands from a conscious choice maker and not from a reactive mind and to really own our choices in life in everything we do whether it's picking the foods that we eat the thoughts that we think or the activities and work that we do with our hands and hearts because we now view ourselves as this complete integrated being connected to the web of life so once you get that Ayurvedic lens, as we start to see the world through the Ayurvedic lens, we see this as a beautiful dance of awareness, choice, and then practice. And so it's this beautiful rhythm. And in that way, we establish our lifestyle and our repeated beingness. So let's take a pause now and um, just ask this question as we move on to the focus for today. And that is in the last 24 hours, just check in. How grateful was I with others? Thinking about yourself from one to 10 and 10 being awesome. If you want, you can write that down. How grateful was I with others just in the past 24 hours? And if you like, you can share it in the chat box or just write it down for yourself. Being honest, self-reflective. How are we showing up right now? Great, people are sharing, seven, eight, awesome, maybe five. You know, awareness and honesty with self is the first step towards freedom because what we can kind of measure and track is now something that we can do something about without judgment, positioning us in that more powerful and empowered state of awareness. Now we can tap into our heart and ask those soul questions of now, what do I want? So knowing who we are, accepting that nature of who we are, and then stepping into that present moment awareness, accepting what is, and then choosing, now what do I want? Is how we roll with yoga and Ayurveda. Perfect, thanks everybody for sharing in the chat. All right, so just reflecting that, noting for yourself, and if you have that wellness journal, we're always encouraging you to just get your wellness journal and keep adding to it. Wherever you learn, whatever insights and inspirations hit you, write it down. Write down your wins, successes, new habits, how great you feel, and make that a connection to where we are right now and keeping our eyes on where we are heading. Okay, so now when we look at behavior change and Ayurveda and yoga are all about behavior change with a very compassionate acceptance of where we are right now. So in our embodied understanding of self as more than just this physical body and that our thoughts are not who we are, but just these changing insights and perceptions of what we're receiving from our external body. The first step is always to say how what is coming into my life. And so what is the current context as Ayurveda views the life, the whole life span for us, we also come into the microscopic moment and be broad in our awareness of what is impacting me in my mind, in my body, in my emotions, any triggers, where am I and how am I being impacted? So that's another great skill set is this broadening of awareness beyond self to understand how external factors impact us. And in psychology, it's known as the external locus of control or internal locus of control and making that connection between our thoughts and the feelings or emotions that come from that, and then how empowered we are to expand our 
ability to choose out of the infinite number of choices how we then move forward. So current context around the world, we're still um, in this pandemic and social, uh, cultural problems, challenges, risks, you know, all of that is a part could be of our daily life, could be just what we watch on news, we could be personally impacted. And then in the season, as we're now facing and coming into November at the end of the year here in America, we, we celebrate Thanksgiving, we honor Thanksgiving as a time to come together with family and to focus on this idea of being grateful, sharing gratitude, expressing being thankful, connecting with an idea of being blessed in life. So just check in again, writing down your thoughts. Where are you with your current context in your life? Whether you're at work, what is your job context, your family context, all of the other aspects of the pieces of the puzzle of our holistic map of our life. And just being aware of how that is impacting us. So in Ayurveda, in previous sessions, we've looked at the dosha clock, and there's also a seasonal clock as we looked at how the different qualities and attributes of everything from the stellar dusts to the intracellular fluids and, and, and cells in our body have the characteristics from the doshas. And so when we can recognize that in our external body through say the seasons, it gives us this opportunity to pause and to check in with ourselves within our mind body complex. How am I staying the same or how am I reflecting the changes of my external body, recognizing that everything is connected and a part of nature, not apart from it. So in Ayurveda, each season is an opportunity to just check in. Whether we do it each season, each month, each week, each day, with each breath, these slowly become our practice of how mindful we are in life and how we allow ourselves to broaden into that connection with our lifespan and how we apply our current choice and whatever it is that's facing us today in life. So the seasons change with the doshas and as we're going into this fall period as we discussed a couple months ago in the fall has all this vata energy and qualities of vata is space and air so that's very variable it's light it's windy it's it could be cold and so it's instable it's unstable uh, before we get right into winter right which is more of the kappa heavy wet period so in the fall there's a lot of instability so just check in. Are you feeling that? Are you connecting with that? And in other parts of the world, you may not be experiencing that. You might be in springtime or summer. I don't know. But just recognizing that if you look out, look out your window right now. What are the characteristics out there? Is it cold? Is it breezy? Is it, is it wet? Is it dry? Is it fiery? So these characteristics are from the gunas. And so we connect everything from these gunas. How do we see ourselves reflecting in this change? And if we feel too much of it, then that is the opportunity to pause and ask ourselves, so then what do I want? What's my desire? If I desire to be more grounded, to be more steady, to be more consistent, to be more nurturing, to be more loving and kind and open and accepting, these are all qualities that can be translated and viewed through the gunas and then connected to food, colors that we wear, scents that we smell, um, you know, things that we see, sounds that we hear, and words that we read. So bringing in the tools from Ayurveda through the five senses, we become more empowered and informed practitioners for our own unique pathway to self care. So it's beautiful practice. So life can be extremely externally focused, keeping us in that distracted and external focus. Okay, so we want to bring it back to core. And in logotherapy, the work by Dr. Victor Frankel, he shared the concept that 
we need more forms of centripetal leisure. So centripetal is a coming back inward. So it's the opposite of like that roller coaster ride that drives you away and out. It's coming from the out to in, back to the core, because the core is where we find and connect with our internal navigation system. So we first begin by practicing awareness, acknowledging who we are by nature. And then as we learn what fuels us and what takes our fuel away, we begin to do bit by bit to reduce our kryptonite, that which reduces our power, our capacity to build these beautiful self-care habits and routines and mindsets. So by then, we learn to discern better for our nature. And then the word santosha that you see here in the title is what we will do as a segue for our talk for today on gratitude. Santosha is again this word from the language of Sanskrit, and it, it means this idea of contentment. This space between being pushed by fear or other other forces or being pulled by desire in some way an external force impacting us to act but instead having this expression of satisfaction of fullness a contentment of spirit if you will so connect with the idea of contentment after you eat a wonderful nourishing meal one that leaves you satisfied but not full and enough food that you're not hungry and somehow is so yummy that you feel nourished and vibrant. So in Ayurveda and yoga, we have many different bodies beyond our physical body. We have the breath body, the mind body and other bodies. So what are we fueling those more subtle, energetic bodies with? Yes. And this can be a challenge for us if we're not um, used to living with habits or rituals. So the idea of Santosha is this sort of, that's our ideal aspect of let's connect with and orient to Santosha, this idea of complete contentment. So we can be still and not be pushed or pulled by our karma or by our desires and to be fully satisfied so we can be fully present, aware, and therefore increase our chances and our, our ability to act as conscious choice makers. So just like habits, when we do a habit and we look for our goal, what is our big vision? And then what's our three month goal? And then what's my next step that I can start with now? The idea is to have this, our guiding star of our main goal, our vision, maybe a one year goal as a guiding star, something to orient ourselves to something that will keep us inspired. That can keep us looking up to what is possible, being curious and open to it and humble in our approach as we take step by step and aligning each of our daily habits. So that each of those are still oriented to that larger goal as we take those breadcrumbs from the soul and just keep working our habits one by one. So we may never reach the star, but it helps to orient how we decide what we do today. So I hope that gives you hope. If you struggle with the idea of feeling content, feeling satisfied, if you feel you're always struggling, like I'm not enough, take a pause right now and let's all take a pause and just recognize that I am enough right now. If you look up at the sky, it's so easy for us to connect with awe and say, my goodness, that's beautiful. The shape of the clouds, the blue sky is so beautiful. It's pure. Now I want you to bring that feeling into yourself, into your body, into your mind and recognize that just as the sky and the clouds exist in its perfection, so do we. 
We are here as perfect beings at our core. And our body and our minds are just this fluctuations. They don't matter as much as our essence and how we show up in life. And I think that that may have been one of the biggest lessons for me in this year. And you can put that in the comments, share anything in the chat, if any of this is resonating with you. At a lot of times we're given messages to be happy, be successful, and not show when we're struggling. But Santosha is the guiding star. So I want us to focus on that and that we honor each step as being as if we're depositing that one penny in our piggy bank of our healthy habits, knowing that it's going to appreciate the more we consistently and diligently practice the daily routines that will feed and nurture our nature. So my friends, that is it. So connecting with what we really, what are we really hungry for in life? And there's a great book by Deepak Chopra that's on that subject if you'd like to dive into that. It's beyond what we're hungry for in food, what we're hungry for in our education and all of the other slices of pie that fill all of our values in life. So if you check in a few months ago, we did one on the slices of pie and understanding what our values are is really critical right now in this time of a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear. So coming back and focusing on what your desires are, remembering that the mind can only focus on one thing. So as we're gonna now go into gratitude, we're gonna understand the importance of mindfulness as this practice and how this is all about reframing where we put our focus. So bit by bit, we continue to focus on putting that penny and allowing that penny to appreciate an increase in value until we have enough, until we have that fullness, until we feel and connect with Santosha. So that is my wish for you and for everyone that we may, that we may experience this deep sense of gratitude and satisfaction that we have consumed life by honoring who we are and by making those conscious choices that complete us the most. And only then, oh my gosh, not only then, but then you will connect with that fire. Your passion will come out and we live on a much new level of consciousness. So in this way, and yes, check your library. They have copies of Deepak's book uh, and many other books. So thank you, Brooke, for putting that in the chat. So let's move now into gratitude, my friends. Um, and if you've been sitting down this whole time, I encourage you to just stand up and stretch your legs. Um, it's good to move every 20 to 30 minutes. So even just stretching your body, moving muscles, moving your big muscles and getting energy into your legs will help to bring more oxygen into your brain, especially if you sit a lot. So make sure that you stand up, maybe just go do 10 push-ups or 10 squats or something or do some standing squats. But moving your body every 20 to 30 minutes is so great for so many different reasons. All right, so let's focus in now on gratitude as we look and prepare for the end of the year, meeting with family and friends. And for a lot of people, the end of the year is not always a wonderful time of year. So recognizing that and being aware that others may be suffering where we may be looking at it in a different way. So it's wonderful to be fully human and to explore and expand all the different ways in which we can show up as well as how other people may be in a struggling or maybe in a joyful state. So one way to kickstart this process is to look at our inventory of our life right now, just as we go into gratitude, take a moment and let's just focus on the breath and a mindfulness moment here. And bring to mind what are three things that you are grateful for in life right now? The big and the small, it doesn't matter. And there's a, a gentleman, David 
Cooper Ryder, one of the founders of the field of appreciative inquiry, says that what you appreciate appreciates. Yes. So appreciating having a dry roof over our head, perhaps a job, perhaps healthy in general. So as you write those down, recognizing that where the word gratitude comes from. So the root of the word gratitude is Latin, gratus, G-R-A-T-U-S, which means grace. It also means grace. So there's no coincidence that gratitude and grace are connected in this concept of a way of being. So gratitude is sort of this state of grace. It has this characteristic of being sure footed, maybe light footed, very much heartfelt and authentic. So which of those did you connect with? Sure footed, light footed, heartfelt, authentic. It uplifts us by orienting us towards the good in ourselves and in others. Most important, taking that awareness from ourselves to others and broadening our awareness. So from the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda, this is at the core of our practice. It's connecting our awareness of self and our, our connection to our outer body and our interrelationships because we are social beings. So gratitude is a part of this weaving together of this beautiful tapestry of our holistic approach in life. It begins first with this idea of understanding self. So the work by Robert Emmons, I want to highlight here as we go into defining what is gratitude. Robert Emmons has spent over 30 years working um, and doing tests on uh, what is gratitude and what are the benefits of gratitude. So he says his definition has two components. First, it's an affirmation of goodness. Okay, so we're affirming what is good. Um, what are the good things in the world? What are the gifts? What are the benefits we received? It doesn't mean that life is perfect. It doesn't ignore complaints or burdens or challenges or hassles. But when we start to look at life as a whole, gratitude encourages us to identify some amount of goodness in all of our life. Remember to some of the words we looked at also from Viktor Frankl, that if we look, we can, we can discover meaning in every moment, even as we suffer. So that is a part of this concept of, are we looking for it? Let's look for it, it's there. And then the second part, according to Robert Emmons, is that figuring out where goodness comes from. We recognize, the sources of this goodness as being outside ourselves. So it, it didn't stem from anything we necessarily did ourselves in which we might take pride. We can appreciate positive traits in ourselves, but true gratitude involves this sort of humble dependence on others. We acknowledge that other people are even higher powers if you're if you have a spiritual mindset these gave us many gifts big and small to help us achieve the goodness in our lives so it's easy to be grateful when things are going well and when we are doing what we want to do right we can have that happiness and that gratitude but he's saying the second definition is also saying there is goodness outside ourselves can we pause and also be aware of that So what are some of the benefits of gratitude, of being grateful? Um, he studied um, thousands of people from 
ages 8 to 80 and found that people who practiced gratitude consistently reported many, many benefits, including the physical, psychological, and social well-being. So physically, a stronger immune system, less bothered by the typical aches and pains, lowering of blood pressure. They tend to exercise more and take better care of their health and they sleep longer. So if any of those are some of your health desires or goals, dive into a practice of gratitude. See what you can benefit for yourself. On the psychological level, he points to some of the benefits as experiencing higher levels of positive emotions, a sense of feeling more alert, alive and awake, and even connecting with more joy, pleasure, and optimism. And then social, perhaps the most important right now, as we are still in physical distance or working remotely, or not able to travel and be with friends this holiday season. So a practice of attitude tended to result with benefits of feeling like we're more helpful, we're more generous and compassionate, more forgiving, perhaps even more outgoing, and a feeling of less lonely and isolated. So my friends, all of those seemed so amazing. So write down which of those apply to you. If there are enough of a motivator, have sparked a curiosity in you to ignite your, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna start with gratitude? So the social benefits, like I said, are especially significant here um, as we look to each other for support, to build community around health and well being as a whole. All right, so from the greater good, um, if you go to greatergood.berkeley.edu, um, Robert Emmons has shared a lot of his research and articles, so I invite you to go and check this out. But in general, gratitude is good medicine for the mind. It improves in so many different ways, like we just talked about, in relationships, in sleep, stress reduction, dealing with burnout, and depression. So check that out if you like more information. And now as we go into um, the 10 ways to become more grateful, I'll just go through them um, real quickly, but just write down one or two that um, seem interesting to you right now that you might want to start with. So number one goal um, or the biggest impact to express and practice gratitude is to keep a gratitude journal. Robert Emmons um, encourages us to start every other day, five to 10 minutes if you can, until you build up that daily routine. And then every day, if you can, for just three to five minutes, establish a daily reminder a daily calendar for yourself, whatever it is to get yourself into the practice and focus on the gifts. Moving away from taking people or things for granted and remembering them and viewing them as granted as gifts in our life. So just setting aside that time, the number one way to boost our happiness by 25% is keeping a gratitude journal for at least the six to 10 week period. So number two, remember the bad. So in order to feel an honor and value one aspect of life, it's also good to remember the opposite. And that's how Ayurveda works by balancing with opposites. So remembering what challenges, what losses, what hazards, what uh, fears we may be experiencing um, can be a great impetus for us to connect and dive into gratefulness. So remember the bad to operate in the good. Number three, ask yourself three questions. So basically, what have I received from fill in the blank? Number two, what have I given to fill in the blank? Number three, what troubles and difficulty have I caused? So if you're having difficulty 
uh, coming up with gratitude, go through those as well. Number four is learn prayers of gratitude. If you need um, some examples, you can just Google them. Um, gratitude prayers, different ways in different spiritual traditions, prayers or affirmations. There's a lot of different resources online for that. Number five, come to your senses, which I totally love because if we can practice how to use the five senses, we are also now going into practicing um, the wisdom from Ayurveda. So what can you touch, see, smell, taste, and hear to gain that appreciation, to be more fully human in our body and in our mind? These are all gifts. Are we aware and present for that beautiful nurturing energy coming in? Number six, use visual reminders. So put a sticky note, write with a, a marker on your mirror, have a gratitude journal, connect with other people, join an affirmations group, text people, write a letter. Number seven, make a vow to practice gratitude, write it out. Make a commitment. I hereby commit to practice gratitude for the next 21 days and then put it on social media, share it with family and friends, post it somewhere where you will be reminded of it every day. Number eight, watch your language. Grateful people have a particular linguistic style. So before we speak, think, right? Focus on the words that we choose to share because that is what we are beginning to co-create with. So it begins in the mind and watch what we are choosing to use for our language. Number nine, go through the motions, fake it till you make it. <laughs> the emotion of gratitude can be triggered. Just do it, get in it. As we know in positive psychology, there's a lot of research that says that action precedes the feeling. So if you wanna feel grateful, do something that's going to make you feel grateful and that will be the start that will get the engine going so if you don't feel grateful guess what go through the motions feel gratitude and then when you feel that gratitude write it down honor it connect with it make that connection action to feeling and you become the instigator of that feeling by taking action first maybe write a letter of gratitude once a week Begin that practice today. Who's the first person that came to your mind? Just go ahead and do that. If you don't wanna do that right now, write it in your, in your calendar, in your planner, 10 minutes, today, tomorrow, when can you do and write that letter and get it out this week. Number 10, think outside the box. If you wanna make the most out of the opportunities to flex your gratitude muscles, just put your gratitude vision on. Where can you see gratitude? It's all around. Can we soften our hardness about just being grateful for that which is good in our life and be able to see everything as good? So, oh my goodness, there's so much there. I hope you were able to take a few notes down which one or two stood out for you the most. If you wanna put it in the chat, definitely put it in your wellness journal or if you have the handout from today's presentation, you can put it in your notes of 10 ways to be more grateful, uh, which one stood out for you. All right, my friends, as usual, oh my goodness, I don't wanna go over time, so let's um, wrap up our discussion here. As we look at the idea of gratitude is both a feeling and an attitude. So as we practice gratitude, more and more and connect with that feeling more and more we begin to change who we are by our thoughts the words we choose to share and the actions aligned with those actions and feelings until we are an attitude of gratitude and that's how we show up in life so really think about that gratitude is both a feeling and an attitude. So I invite you to check out more of Robert Emmons's work. He's done um, 30 years of work in this field, tons of information um, and more guidance in his books, Thanks and Gratitude Works. So those are two books by Robert Emmons. Thanks, apostrophe is one, and then Gratitude Works. So as we look at 
Ayurveda and the ancient wisdom and this idea of gratitude is both a feeling and an attitude. The idea of the seven biological responses that we've um, reflected on in prior sessions answers this question from this consciousness based approach from Ayurveda of knowing who am I and how am I showing up in life? What is my repeated beingness? You know, how do I show up every day? What are the 60 to 80,000 thoughts that I think every day? And as those go into our soup of our mind and our characteristics, who am I becoming with all these habits? So is gratitude in there? Is a practice of gratitude in there? And how would that shift the contents of the soup of our mindset and our life? So the seven biological responses just show us and tell us different ways how we can show up in life. Are we stuck in the fight flight? Are we tending to be reactive? Or are we now in this practice of doing mindfulness techniques like yoga and breathing and journaling and walking in nature? Does that bring us into being more of a restfully aware person? And then after that, can we tap into the higher levels of consciousness with an intuitive way of being. Maybe now we're looking at life creatively, no longer focusing on problems, but how we can grow bigger as a person to outgrow our problems. And in that way, see the problems in a new light. As Einstein said, problems created in a certain mindset can't be solved there. We have to go to a new level of consciousness. He said it in a totally different way, but I think you get it. <laughs> Or can we connect with an idea of living a visionary life or a sacred life? So these are all opportunities, all different ways in which we can connect in how we show up every day. So to wrap it up, as we look at our doshas, doshas again are just tendencies of how we tend to show up based on our nature. They are not our destiny. We have free will. So by using free will, we can use gratitude as a powerful tool to reframe when we are in those times of stress, uncertainty, or perhaps ungratefulness. At any time, we can pause and choose how we will reorient. So as we shared last month, yoga is this consciousness practice. So we can free our mind by changing our patterns. And yoga and Ayurveda both support to help rewiring our thought patterns. So that concludes the, the discussion on gratitude. Uh, mindfulness is a whole other topic, which we'll dive into a little bit more next month. And so for enlivening our health, we always remember to think of yourself as a conscious and aware being. How am I showing up? each day what are the characteristics and then become familiar with the dosha qualities those gunas take that quiz you can connect with me uh, for a 20 minute complimentary review of your number one dosha quiz because i do want you to be able to answer that question of who am i so you can make better choices on where you would like to um, evolve towards so my friends, thank you so much for joining us in our brief discussion on this uh, timely subject of gratitude. And I want to invite you to join us next month, December 8th, as we look at the topic of upward spiral living, uh, working with our mindset and our habits to create our meaning and purpose map as we orient towards more flourishing in life. So join us uh, second Wednesday. And the references um, are here if you want to take a snapshot on some yoga and Ayurvedic texts, then you can reach me here. My website's going to go through some um, reworking, so it may not be up. So you can connect with me on Instagram at lifestyles to thrive and that's the number two. And on Facebook and LinkedIn, you can connect with me at Maggie Gruskin. So thank you so much for this uh, ability and opportunity for me to share my passion on all things Ayurveda related. So with that, we'll go ahead and turn it over for a brief Q&A as we wrap up our time. 
So Brooke, I will go ahead and stop the share now and turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, everybody.